I, I got to bring a wagon because I got to drag my fat ass kid back home. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he came in at a spelt forty six pounds and we're leaving at he's eighty seven, <laughs> and that includes having to lop his foot off at, because he got diabetes about three p.m. And whose team is this? Is this your team, or is this your daddy's team? Thanks for listening to Dad Mode Podcast: Common Sense Parenting in a Politically Correct World. Here's your host, Andy Carlson. Welcome back to the Dad Mode Podcast, Common Sense Parenting in a Politically Correct World. I'm your host, Andy Carlson, at Andy Carlson Show on the Twitter machine. I'm a father, and I have no idea what I'm doing, but you don't either there, Kimasabi. Let's try and learn something together today. Website is dadmodepod.com. Twitter at dadmodepod, or just use the hashtag dadmode. Joining me today, a guy who spends more time at the State Fair than hashtag Black Lives Matter, Uncle Nick. At Nickerson. Hey. Hey, Andy. How's it going? Now, I feel like the 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 fabled protest for Black Lives Matter on the opening Saturday of State Fair wasn't that big. Um, from what I've seen, because I, I wasn't there that day, um, like a lot of people were protesting outside the fair, mm-hmm. which led to um, them can't like like closing down like the front, the main front gate for a while. Mm-hmm. But um, and then I I do believe they did go inside. But um, from what I've heard, I mean, it was as peaceful as I could, as any protest can be. I mean, it well, wasn't that's good. As, you know, there wasn't the violence that like you see like in Ferguson. You know, it's um, you know, I I don't think it caused too too much trouble other than like filling up Twitter and Facebook with a bunch of. Every, all your friends' opinions on the matter. I see. I, I never understood protesting. Uh, mainly, uh, well, protesting at places like this, where it has no direct impact to what you're protesting against. Like when they also shut down uh, I-35W ahead of the Minneapolis, and like people are laying down on the highway. Like th- they're what they're protesting is is very. It's Fantastic idea as far as like equal rights, equal treatment, et cetera. It's something that's very important that should be talked about. But when you make your protests on something that's really going to annoy the bejesus out of people, like shutting down I-35 or making the fair even more crowded, more miserable than it already is in the first place, um, that, that just pisses people off. And then they don't listen to your message, which is a very valid one that you're trying to get across. And also... What are you trying to accomplish? Like, what what would satisfy you? Like, what are your demands? I don't know if they're looking for sympathy at all from these people by getting in and <clears> disrupting <throat> their ways. I I don't know. I mean, I I mean, I, th- I kind of think eventually. I mean, maybe um, in society, what, no one's looking at the protesting because you know generally, where do most people protest? Back in the day, you always go to the um, front lawn of the Capitol building. You know, mm. um, yeah, they should do that. Yeah, which, I mean, you know, I mean, which is so, I don't want to use, say the word generic, you know, I mean, everyone, I mean, I'm assuming these people with social media as big as it is now, you know, when you cause a disruption, more people maybe are turning their attention to it, unfortunately, it's backlashing, and now you have a lot of people who don't want to support any causes that you may or may not are trying to make people aware of because they're more frustrated with you disrupting their lives. It's It's a hard balance that... I don't think um, these protesters are getting All right. yet. And just wrapping this up, and then we'll actually get, get into the topic. We're really good at tangenting off the top, but <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like a lot of protesting groups, and you know, this isn't just limited to Black Lives Matter. It's you know, pretty much every protest group, or you know, just justice for blank, 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 is that they don't have a clear message of what they want. Like they have no like guidelines of what would appease them. So like if people were protesting, you know, like a bakery, we'll say, like, what do you want? What are your demands? Do you want yellow cake on the menu? Do you want yellow cake more prominent than vanilla cake? We can do that, except you have to make it clear what you want, as opposed to just being an angry a rabble that has no way of being appeased. And then you're just doing it for uh, attention at that point. I'm thrown off by your example of yellow cake. So, <laughs> sorry. No, I mean, if people just showed up and be like, 
What do we want? Yellow cake. When do we want it? At 1045 Tuesday. That, that is very clear and concise of what they want. And they can get, we can work this out. We can get it. <laughs> what do we want? Justice. Justice for what? Something. I don't know. <laughs> or Just it's justice. <laughs> All right. So the reason we're on this topic is that we're talking about the state fair. <laughs> Even though we spent like four or five minutes completely filibustering about Black Lives Matter, but that's okay. And again, completely support the cause, no issue with it. But I just wish they wouldn't interrupt, you know, families and you know, their nice little get together. Like State Fair, Minnesota State Fair, uh, people who don't live in the state, is probably the highlight of the end of the summer. It's a nice little cap. They call it the Great Minnesota Get Together. Everyone comes in, eats way too much, drinks way too much, sees some lame ass band from the 80s and then it goes home and then it's football time but and nick you went this year how was your experience um i had a great time it's uh it's always nice to uh i take a day off of work um to go to go during the week because obviously um the state fair the weekends um the holiday labor day the three-day weekend i mean that's when typically everyone goes on those days um the secret is uh, is to have a good day to go, weather-wise, because obviously you're outside. And, you know, um, being out there with, um, I believe the average number that they get, I think they get like a couple hundred thousand a day um, going into the fair. I mean, it, you know, if it's a hot, muggy day, you know, you, you don't, you don't want to stay there at the fair too long. If it's going to rain, you know, you don't want to stay too long either. So if you can somewhat forecast the weather a couple weeks in advance, and uh, put in your time off request, you know, you can have a really good time at the fair. Also, the crowds are terrible. The, the crowds, yes. As I said, I'm, I'm looking up the numbers right now. Um, it, it, you, I'm pretty confident they can get up to 100,000 a day at, a, um, at the fair. I mean, it, it, it's like a, it, the state fair is a small little, you know, closed campground. Just um, for those who aren't in Minnesota, you know, just um, east east part of St. Paul, it's 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 not too big. And um, if you live in that area, you know, you have so much foot traffic and so much car traffic with everyone trying to fill up the lots. And it's just if you're someone who doesn't like crowds, you might not care for the state fair too much. Now, what's you? You always seem to have a parking strategy. And what, what's your what's your deal? Um. Key thing is is early morning. I like to go to the state fair early morning. The fair opens at 6 a.m. So I like to, um, uh, obviously, a majority of the people who show up at 6 a.m. are the elderly or people who work at the fair. Um, they do not ha I don't think all the employees can get into the employee parking lot that the state fair offers. And there are stands that open at 6 a.m. So um, there's a neighborhood just, we um, just west of the state fair off of like the St. off of the Snelling Avenue Midway area where um, if you strategize and like you find the right streets that don't have a lot of people parking on it you can just um, park you know park outside of a house and uh, walk over you know a couple blocks he is he is going early in the morning though before 8 a.m. all right and even though we're already eight minutes into the episode uh, the main thing I want to talk about is kids at the state fair you know tying it all in because uh, I feel like the state for state fair is built for kids. I mean, you got so many of the like the rise experiences, and yeah, you know, that's some of the, the good memories I had from a kid just going to the state fair and eating way too much, and then riding that little stupid slide where you sit on those grooved mats. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. uh, what were some of the things that you saw this year out of kids, parents, et cetera? Oh God. Okay, so where do Kids love games, so um, Kids Central is definitely the um, well one of two places. There's the Mighty Midway, which a lot of us young adults know. Um, that's where all the big rides are. That's where all the big boy machines are, the roller coasters and everything. But obviously, since we're a kid friend with kid friendly podcast today, um, there's the mini kid mini uh, the mini Midway um, in the center of the fair where they have the simple. Uh, uh, merry-go-rounds and the small um, up and down rides and the, the little fun funhouse uh, um, game buildings. Uh, a lot of a lot of kids running around that. Now, as far as 
uh, parents go, did you see like the stroller brigade? Which a stroller is basically a tank, or parents think that they're the. I, I've come across that parents who have a stroller, whether the kid's in it or not, just feel like they can just uh, completely run through crowds because oh, I got a stroller, I got a stroller. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, excuse me, come through. Bam. It's a smuggish board. It's um, strollers. It's pe- um, parents with the um, what's the red pole wagon. Um, quite a few, quite a few of that. But um, I, but there, I, a lot of people are, are a lot of kids are walking with them. It's it, it's a trek. It's um, pretty it's pretty crazy to see. But um, but it's not too many strollers as I would have expected. It's all as a moving on to the other types of vehicles and whatnot. Uh, like, so people actually are bringing like a giant ass wagon oh, in, yeah. oh, into yeah. an oh, already yeah. crowded and terrible place. I I, I hate people. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's a uh, it's a pain in the um, ass. Um, well, it, it it can be. Um, all right, so um, we're talking about the kids um who like to the mighty fairway. The other place where all the kids like to go is food. Mm. State Fair is about two things. It's about rides and food. Yeah, sure, there's animals, too. We can talk about the animals later. But um, obviously, you're eating the most unhealthiest thing imaginable at the fair. So a lot of the kids, a lot of the families are in the are in the food building, uh, walking around, hovering around the corn dog stand at 9 a.m., waiting for the first corn dog of the day to come up. And, yeah, just, you know, got to stuff those kids full of sugar and greasy food. I, I got to bring a wagon because I got to drag my fat ass kid back home. <laughs> he, he he came in at a spelt forty six pounds and we're leaving at his eighty seven, <laughs> and that includes having to lop his foot off at, because he got diabetes about three p.m. <laughs> we did everything we could, <laughs> and then they deep fried his foot and put it on a stick, and we're taking her home. <laughs> and the kid ate it. <laughs> uh, that might be a little bit too far. Now, Nick, uh, yeah, you, you are. Uh, you basically grew up in the shadows of the fairgrounds, didn't you? Oh yeah, um, I can tell you some uh, good. Kid yeah, were some good that. stories from when you were a kid. Uh, all right, well, I don't want to get people in trouble with this. Do but, it. Um, <laughs> I, um, my, my my mom, um, hell, my friends' moms, um, when me and my friends we used to go down there when we were ten, you know, they just dropped us off. It was like, here, go, go to the fair, be there all day, have fun, give us a like save fifty, save a quarter, so you can like, get on a payphone and call us when you need a ride back, or we'll set a time frame thing of when so and so will will come pick you up. That was how we did it. We would drop off at the fair. There was no effing supervision at all. Um, I bought my first butterfly knife knife outside the state fair when I was eleven, um, because outside outside the state fair there are people who have booths out there. That sell like you know they they have a food. There's a corn dog stand outside the state fair that you can go into. Like if you didn't want to pay the eight to ten dollars back in the day to go into the fair, you could eat. You know they have a there's one there's at least one stand that sells corn dogs and cheese curds outside the fair. You can go and get your state fair food fill and leave. Um, mm-hmm. But there were also vendors who sold stuff. Um, me and my buddy will always remember the there was a stand that sold fucking knives and lighters. And- and weapons and uh, my buddy i think my buddy jay bought um throwing stars and we were 10 and 11 um i think me and my buddy back each bought butterfly knives um we had our first zippo lighters at the sa- at the same time as well they didn't fucking sell it they didn't fucking care they're selling them to kids <laughs> they wouldn't <laughs> no one See, was lenient th- that is the also the fun thing like the the dirty little secret about the state fairs is the uh, flea market people, which, like you said, are, are basically some of the skeeviest people you've ever met. And then also the people putting up the midway rides, uh, you know, the carnies. It's like, oh, I really trust this roller coaster that was assembled by uh, gypsies and remnants of society. Uh, yeah, that, that was hauled in on a flatbed truck. Yeah. Let's get on this oh, roller no. coaster, baby. <laughs> and I swear, all um, going here now, let's see, it's, 2000, it's 2015. 2000 and late. I know. And let's see, and I was talking about going to the fair when I was 10, so in the early 90s. I'm pretty confident most of those rides have not changed at all. You know, I'm pretty confident they probably just squirt some WD-40 every time they come into town and like, oh, this ride is a ride now. And 
you know, just simple push button and whatever the F and old school motto is to get the rides moving. I mean, it's now it's, were, it's, were you ever able to sneak into some of the adult rides when you were younger? Because uh, I feel like their policies would be a lot more lax than, say, a Valley Fair. I'm trying to think. Um, I was I was always terrified of the rides. So um, I think my friends were able to kind of like like get the do the whole get on your tippy toes to be like you must be this tall to ride the ride. Type of thing. The '90s was so lax with kids and stuff. As I said, like like um, 2015, there are no booths of the things that I've mentioned earlier with the knives. You know. Um, when I was a kid, at the county the county games they used to play, I could get posters with girls in bikinis. Now the hottest poster out there is that same goddamn alien one that says "You are not alone" and just pointing out with their freaky fucking finger. It's it's a yeah. It, no, no, the, divergent. It's so PG now. Divergent. What, what's that no chick's name? Um, oh, Sh- uh, Shaylee Shaley Wood- Woodward. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's cute. She's got the girl next door vibe. I think it might be when she got her start at Secret Life, the American teenager, when she had like seven kids. I don't think that's the same one, is it? That's uh, probably not. Anyways, uh, yeah, it, the 90s were a, a way better time, mostly because you know you could buy uh, that butterfly knife. Oh, uh, the wife is making an appearance. Hey, come say something. Oh, come on. Hey, Crystal. Talk about all the butterfly knives that you bought. Anyways. Uh, yeah, 90s were way better because, yeah, like you said, you could go through the little flea market and the little, uh, little kiosk and stuff and you can buy a butterfly knife. You could buy a Zippo lighter and people wouldn't say a lip. I mean, when you got home and your parents were probably like, all right, just don't cut yourself or burn yourself or cut and burn yourself. And nowadays, um, parents would be like, oh, my gosh. We are going down. We're going to sue this gentleman. We're going to sue the fairgrounds for letting this gentleman uh, pe- uh, peddle his wares. Oh, he's outside the fair. We will sue the city, mm-hmm. and we will sue everyone. Everybody getting sued up in here. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's ridiculous. Ugh. Uh, um, all right, so I feel like we're a little bit on tangent off of kids, but got, um, the kids at the fair, I mean – Luckily, from from my experience, uh, was it last, I think last Tuesday was when I went. Um, at least kids aren't left roaming around by themselves like I've seen, like like me and my friends were back in the day. Well, that explains um, how I, you all turned out like you did. <laughs> you know it. Every you know it's everyone's like with their surrounding their par- you know their parents or whatever. That's because people are, are helicopter parents now. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, don't don't eat that sweet mouth is cookie. Is this gluten free? Is this not gluten free? How dare you, Martha? But Go to hell, problem, Martha. The problem with the state fair, this is almost opposite. The, you, you, you have the you have the fat kids, you have the fat moms with the rascals. You know, like, hey, you're not having dinner when you get home. No more pizza rolls. You got to eat all the fried food that we buy here. Mm-hmm. Oh, you eat God. that stick. We, we had some pizza pe- food. We had some pizza rolls yesterday, and I haven't had pizza rolls maybe in like two years, and. Oh my goodness! They're good, right? Yeah, I, I can't even. Uh, I, I can't even start to say. But uh, Not those like Tic Tacs. The think, thing about kids now and the fair is that the fair used to actually be about you know like showing cows and uh, uh, agriculture stuff. Because I remember uh, you know the times I went there as a kid, I feel like I was being punished because my grandpa would make me walk through like the agriculture exhibitions and stuff. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't care about this stuff. Let me go on the slide. Let's go get some Tom Thumbs donuts and come on, grab let's go. Okay, you know, talking to um my uh, my coworkers and um with, who all have kids um and something that I'm always against at the fair is they love the animal section of the fair because there are a lot of buildings that are like like that the show off the poultry, the the sheep, the cows, and everything, the pigs. I mean, that's a very big staple part of the fair, which. As an adult who likes to eat and doesn't like smelling gross livestock, um, I'm usually against it. But well, Nick, don't you want to see where problem. the veal on a stick is made? Where it came from beforehand? No, I like, just care about the that same day because you know that little Bessie cow is getting uh, hacked up and then <laughs> veal on a stick the next day, baby. <laughs> the, the state fair butcher shop. <laughs> that terrifying kids. It's like you, all right, so you're not telling me. That there wasn't one incident 
in the history of the Minnesota State Fair, which has been going on for hundreds, hundred years. Yeah, yeah. That there hasn't been an incident, especially like say 1930 or oh, during World War II when there was a shortage of meat and everything. That one of the cows on exhibit, and one of the booths, and one of the farmers didn't reach an agreement. Like, hey, I'll give you X amount. We need meat. There's shortage of meat everywhere. There's rationing everywhere. Let's just do this. And they bought the sheep. And then the haggis on the stick booth survived another day. That had to have happened at least once. That sounds way too quick. Doesn't take time to, like, kill, process that. I, nope. I, 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 Not for you, right? <laughs> it all happens overnight. <laughs> what the carnies do who always the, the, the kids sneak into the fair, and then all they see is this uh, the sheep butterflied. And draining out over the the <laughs> haggis stand. Go away, kids. Come back later. Yeah. Um, I think I'm um, uh, um, just a random history lesson here. I went to the history section of the state fair. They like open up a new history exhibit, and I think the state fair was last closed. I think during the uh, like uh, 1944, 45 year because of the because of rationing everything because of World War Two. That's got kind of weak. And they still play college football. Why can't they have the fair? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, last one. How many... All right, so we went over the strollers, went over the wagons. How many kids on leashes did you see? I did not see a single kid on the leash. What? I know. That's shocking as hell, but I did not. And now, that's something I usually... I always I always see kids on the leash. It's like one of the like, pet peeves of existence is, is uh, of existing in this world is so you can see... People treat their kids like dogs. Now, see, that used to be all the rage. Do you think it's gotten to the point where, uh, like, the social media mafia has publicly shamed parents who used to have their kids on leashes so much that it's uh, almost out of vogue now? Yeah, that are just, you know, leashes are just too damn expensive. Fucking My nice. kids need to roam free or at least pile their fat ass in a wagon. Well, I mean, because then you might be... I mean, you might have those parents who might think that you're mistreating your kid if they see him on a leash. They probably think that, oh, we probably put him in a cage when we get home. So, you know. Yeah, you're mistreating your kid as as you shove the 17th uh, hot dish on a stick down his throat. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can tell you about the – let me tell the viewers about the funny thing. I, the, one, the one bad parent moment I saw at the fair was um, obviously walking around there are kids – you know, screaming, you know, yelling for food, this and that and everything. There was one toddler, um, she had, uh, the boy or girl had to be about two or three, um, you know, being pushed in a stroller, um, just kind of crying, just kind of screaming, you know, not like the loudest, like, you know, you stop everything because kids scream, but like a typical, like make kids just uncomfortable or whatever. Um, <laughs> walking past the, walking past the, the kid and the mom, um, all the mom was doing was, was it was um, leaning forward while pushing the cart, like with her long arm, and just trying to cover up the kid's mouth, like muffling it, like, 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 a, like a goddamn kidnapping or something. It was the most ridiculous. Maybe it was like, a kidnapping. Maybe there was Amber Alert out, Nick. Except you turn Amber Alerts off on your phone because you're a terrible person. I did not turn them off on my phone because I always get Amber Alert. Well, actually, I haven't gotten Amber Alert in quite a while. So maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, but. But how do you know if it's if it's working? You know, maybe it is turned off, and I didn't. Maybe know. there should be a test of the Amber Alert system once every like month. Once a month, first Wednesday of every month, we get that beep beep. The Amber Alert system does work. Yeah. Now, yeah, I don't think there's been anything in Minnesota lately. I feel like I feel like the coasts, like East Coast, West Coast, have more of those Amber Alert things affecting them more than us. Now, uh, closing thought, a uh, little bit of the randomness, but I feel like technology has progressed to the point where there should be, you don't want to say implant because that implies certain things, uh, you, but there should be an app, all right, where the kid can wear, don't want to say a collar, or, or so like a necklace, right? Kid wears a necklace and there's an app that can mute the kid, like his, like his vocal cords get, gets muted, like if he's, he or she is throwing a tantrum or acting up or like swearing and being disrespectful, all of a sudden mute. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> like a like a fucking robot. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Do you do you know how much better like crowded places like the state fair or the grocery store would be if that was a widespread app? I can see that eventually affecting the adults as well. Like if a husband Cone of and wife get into, a, get into like an argument or something, can't like the husband and wife just mute them, mute each other? Except they have to be wearing the necklace. <laughs> I would find another. I don't know, I'd find ways around that. Like just like permanently like invent it into their. You'd have to permanently do something. I don't think you can just put something around a kid and like like just be able to mute it. Well. Like it's like you like can't like take out their vocal cords like they do with dogs. That'd be terrible. Oh, that's sad. Oh, the kid is really lippy, and is going to be working construction anyways. <laughs> construction. Yeah, there you go. Uh, all right. If you like our idea of the app that mutes the kids, tell a friend about it and be like, you know, this this dad mode podcast with um, this uh, kind of creepy guy named Nick and this kind of really really awesome guy named Andy. Wait, it's good no. stuff. It's good stuff, and they talk about quasi parental relay stuff, and then talk about Black Lives Matter for five minutes of the fir- of a half an hour episode. No big deal. No big deal. Also, a good way to support the show is Amazon Dadmopod dot com. Top left corner, click through our Amazon banner, bookmark it, and every time you buy a little something, something from Amazon, we get a taste. Nick, what's the next thing you're buying on Amazon? Um, looking into um, buying new uh, re- recording equipment. Or you know what? Actually, I might I might want to buy an office chair. Oh really? Oh, uh, well, well, why don't you know buy you uh, like one of those stability balls? <laughs> well, I don't know if you can see this right now. Um, I'll post a picture on my Twitter handle um, eventually today. But um, typically, when I record our podcast, I'm just sitting in bed. I I, I have uh, pillows and blankets surrounding me. I you know like holding me up. Right now, um, because I'm out of town, I'm. Uh, I'm dog sitting in Tonka. I'm I'm at an office desk right now recording, and this is phenomenal. This is way more comfortable than just sitting on a bed. So I might have to be more professional when I do these podcasts and be more, um, you know, look at my posture, get a nice little fancy office office chair. Nick's only in bed because he's an invalid, and because I'm going to become a bed person who needs like a who needs a forklift to get me out every day. Crap, people. Yeah, Nick's going to buy his office chair through Amazon on our link, and you should, too. Uh, also, the show is available on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at DadmaPod, me at Andy Carlson Show, Nick at Nickison, or at Jared from Subway. Whoa, whoa, no. Website is DadmaPod.com. Uh, but we're gone. Be a man. Be a father. Go Dadmo. And we'll see you next time. I love the State Fair. Bad people. Think the episode you just heard is worth a dollar? Well, send it our way. Visit dadmodepod.com slash support to find out how. Be a man. Be a father. Go dad mode. The music is created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, visit soundcloud.com slash Deeb.